Thus I have heard. At one time, the blessed <clears throat> dwelling in the royal domain of Vulture Peak Mountain, with a great gathering of monks and a great assembly of bodhisattvas. At that time, the blessed one was absorbed in the samadhi of the many aspects of phenomena called profound appearance. At the same time, noble Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva Mahasattva, looking at the practice of the profound perfection of wisdom, saw the five skandhas and their natural emptiness. Then, through the power of the Buddha, <clears throat> Venerable Shariputra said to the noble Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva Mahasattva, How should a son of a lineage train who wishes to follow the practice of the profound perfection of wisdom? Thus he spoke, and the noble Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva Mahasattva answered the venerable Sharadvati Putra with these words. Shariputra, those men and women of a lineage who wish to follow the practice of the profound perfection of wisdom should look at it like this. The five skandhas should be seen purely in their natural emptiness. Form is empty. Emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form. Form also is not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, recognition, compositional factors, and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, like this, all phenomena are emptiness, and having no characteristics, they are unborn and unceasing. They are not impure or pure. They neither decrease nor increase. Therefore, Shariputra, in emptiness, there is no form, no feeling, no recognition, no compositional factors, no consciousness, no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no appearance, no sound, no smell, no taste, no sensation, no phenomena. There is no quality of sight and so on until no quality of mind and no quality of mental consciousness. There is no ignorance and no exhaustion of ignorance and so on up to no old age and death and no exhaustion of old age and death. In the same way, there is no suffering, no origin, no ending and no path. No wisdom, no attainment and no non-attainment. Therefore, Shariputra, since there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and abide by means of the profound perfection of wisdom. And since their minds have no obscurations, they have no fear. Transcending falsity, they attain nirvana. All the Buddhas who dwell on the three times have relied upon the perfection of wisdom and have become true and complete Buddhas of unsurpassable, perfect, and complete enlightenment. Therefore, the mantra of the profound perfection of wisdom, the mantra of insight, the unsurpassed mantra, the unequaled mantra, the mantra which calms all suffering should be known as truth, for it is not deceptive. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is proclaimed. Teata om gate gate paragate parasam gate bodhi soha. 
Shariputra. This is how a Bodhisattva and Mahasattva should train in the profound perfection of wisdom. Then the Blessed One arose from that Samadhi and said to the Bodhisattva Mahasattva and noble Avalokiteshvara that he had spoken well. Well done, well done, O son of the lineage, it is so. O son of the lineage, since it is just so, the profound perfection of wisdom should be practiced just as you have taught, and the Tathagatas will also rejoice. When the Blessed One has said this, the Venerable Shared Bhattiputra and noble Avalokiteshvara mm -hmm. Bhattva Mahasattva and the entire gathering, as well as worldly beings, gods, humans, asuras, and Gandharvas, rejoiced and praised the words of the Blessed One.
ダテルマンソペタペペセワラタナンビゲチュルケシシソナタンデダワデンロチノチシンツワチシチツグレス。エンザネテンジュゲミダマソペペペケシャナサガンボンジュジダワセネニチラ。ネンボンジュベテンジ
to engage in the practice of the Dharma. So which has a great significance. <clears throat> Tanakanyu so, so in this particular month, you know, on the eighth of the fourth Tibetan month, of eight of the fourth Tibetan month, it's said to be the Buddha actually renounce, become a renouncer, Rabdu Chongwa. And on the fifteenth of this, uh, the fourth of Tibetan month, the fifteenth of the fourth of Tibetan month is as a uh, actually by uh, you know uh, commemorates three special activities of the buddha such as his birth uh, enlightenment and body nirvana so therefore it is important for us as a practitioner to remember his uh, the buddha's you know history and determining yourself to following his footsteps. Mm-hmm. <coughs> So it is therefore the way we actually uh, commemorate Buddha's uh, Buddha's special day, the Buddhist, you know, activity, is by remembering and by understanding the teachings of the Buddha. This is how we should commemorate uh, Buddha's, uh, you know, activities. Just as Lama Tsongkhapa stated in his prayers to dependent originations. Uh, out of all those activities, the activities of the speech of the Buddha is said to be the supreme among amongst the activities of the Buddha. So therefore, we also, by understanding, uh, you know, how important it is for us to really to follow uh, the teachings of the Buddha by reflecting one's mind upon the, you know, the supremacy, supremacy, supremacy of his speech. Then that so now, uh, let's take a time, a couple of minutes to visualize Buddha Shakyamuni by remembering the Buddha's kindness 
in other words, his speech, the teachings of the Dharma, given to his followers out of his out of compassion and love towards all other sentient beings. So it is therefore the way we visualize is now imagining the Buddha is being in the meditative equipoise, uh, meditating on the great bliss and emptiness, non-dual great bliss and emptiness, in other words, non-dual great, great bliss and emptiness, sorry. And it, at the same time, Buddha is actually uh, extending his uh, unconditional love and compassion towards all other sentient beings. This is a, something that is exclusive qualities of the Buddha, something that cannot be possessed for any other beings, even including Arya beings. The Buddha is the only one who can, uh, you know, simultaneously with meditating on great bliss and emptiness, non-dual great bliss and emptiness, at the same time to be able to extend his compassion and, and love towards all other sentient beings. It is uh, for some time, it, it's, uh, you know, we have a, uh, some simple example of that. It's just our spiritual teacher at the monastery, in other words, when they are actually, uh, you know, uh, single pointedly focusing on their practice, such as chanting or reciting the sutras or reciting, you know, sadha and so forth. Yet at the same time, he's always being careful, carefully listening to his disciples, what they are doing. Are they really following his advice and so on and so forth? And uh, so this is how the Buddha, although the Buddha is being in the uh, deeply in the meditative equipoise on the non-dual great place and emptiness, at the same time, simultaneously, he's able to extend his compassion and love towards all other sentient beings. So with this, uh, then he is then surrounded by all other great masters of the lineage masters of the London Jammu. And then being imagining yourself in their presence, surrounded by all other sentient beings. And all sentient beings have a similar wish to achieve happiness and overcome sufferings. And having a strong faith, irreversible, irreversible faith towards the Buddha. Buddha who is being, uh, who is in the meditative equipoise. So let's take a couple of minutes to meditate on this at this time. <clears throat> <clears throat> so with this motivation, the teachings we are receiving, the Dharma teaching we are receiving is 
which are the THS on the stages of the THS on the path to enlightenment, the Namrim Chimu, which actually, you know, gives us a clear instructions of how do we really begin ourselves on the spiritual path all the way to the state of complete enlightenment. So therefore, uh, we, as usual, we begin with our teachings by, you know, by, by, by reading these outlines, beginning from this first outline, which is the greatness of the authors given in order to hear the teachings as a noble source. So therefore, it is whether the teaching is authentic, the authenticity of the teaching is made on the basis of the teacher who actually taught the teachings, who actually, you know, uh, give the teachings. So, <clears throat> so this is the author of this Lamrim Chemu is the Lama Tsongkhapa, who actually uh, engaged himself listening to the teaching, the vast teachings. And then he, in the middle, he then contemplated on the meanings of the vast teachings that he has received. And finally, he then undertake the rigorous practice of whatever the teachings that he has, he has received and contemplated uh, both day and night. So, now, if someone asks you uh, who is Lama Tsongkhapa, how he is like, and an answer to this question should be Lama Tsongkhapa in outer appearance, was very peaceful looking appearance, such as, you know, was a renunciate, was a fully ordained and very peaceful looking and, uh, and, uh, and contented. And then uh, an inner quality, speaking about his inner quality is uh, the inner quality of two stages, the two stages, completion of the two stages, inner qualities of the two stages. Uh, and who is able to propound both teachings of the Sutra and Tantra without contradicting each other, but complementing each other. So this is how we can understand, you know, uh, showing the greatness of the teachings itself in order to engender the respect for the teachings. It's because the teachings such as Lamrim Chemu, the, the currently we are receiving, that um, is something that he has given to his disciples out of his compassion. And it is true, whatever the teachings that he has given, even the one word of the teachings that he has given, is totally out of compassion and love for other beings. <clears throat> 
so this uh, teachings of the Lamrin Jamu is not actually by you know uh, just mere the treatises that are written by the Buddha Pa and Lama Tsongkhapa himself, but it is the active he actually encapsulated or uh, in a compiled all the teachings of the Buddhas of the 10 directions, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the 10 directions. And it is, in other words, it is a common compilation of the Buddhas of the 10 directions and describing the activities of the Buddhas of the 10 directions, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the 10 directions. <clears throat> So then this is how we should listen to the teachings and how we should actually teach the teachings on the basis of cultivation of the body, motivation of the body chat, in other words. <coughs> <clears throat> so in brief, you know, now try to listen to the teachings by by reflecting one's mind upon the pure thoughts the noble thoughts of the Lama Tsongkhapa himself. So then uh, this will then be followed by the three other outlines as usual, the sequence in which the disciples, disciples are, are to be taught the actual instructions and then how to rely on the teacher, which is the root of our spiritual path, and how the students train their mind uh, after having relied on teacher. Yes. So we are on the uh, the teachings on the how to do the practice of the bodhisattvas. So when it comes to the practice of the bodhisattvas, 
the primary of two, two things is so integrating the disciples, the practice of integrating disciples, doing what we do, which means the four practices of integrating disciples, integrating disciples, and this practice of the six perfections. So currently we're on the practice of six perfections. Out of six perfections, we have completed uh, first and second perfections, which is perfection of generosity, perfection of ethical discipline. And now we are currently, we are on the third perfection of, uh, of uh, third perfection of Bodhisattva's practice, which is the practice, practice of patience. Perfection of patience, sorry. So then on the card, uh, we are on the how to tend the perfection of patience. When it comes to uh, when it comes to the explanation of how to tend the perfection of patience as a five parts, you know, from the beginning, it says what is patient, what patient is, in other words, what is the nature of patience? So being more. And then second, it is called how to begin with the cultivation of patience. Third is a division of practice, sorry, the divisions of divisions of patience and how to practice patience. And fifth is a summary. So we are currently on the third uh, outlines, which is a division of practice. When it comes to the division of practice, uh, you know, there are three parts, three divisions, in other words, developing the patience of uh, disregarding harm done to you, developing the patience of accepting suffering, developing the patience of, uh, of uh, in a certitude about the teachings. <coughs> So actually this the sequence and uh, of those outlines are given in order to uh, you, know, you know given as instructions of how to practice you know sequentially it is given instructions the clear instructions of sequential practice how do we actually practice systematically but at this point we haven't really mastered ourselves on such practices when we look at this outlines we are kind of seeing not as a systematically but we just see somewhere everywhere it is just scattering everywhere it is just like that we have a lot of things but you don't know where to where you where you want to keep where you want to put those things things that you have <clears throat> So here now, out of those three divisions of the patients that we talked about earlier, uh, the most important part for us to focus on the practice is the first practice of the patient, which is developing, developing the patients of the disregarding harm done to you. So this is uh, something that is really important for us to uh, to be adapted, in other words, practice needs to be adapted. Ah, uh, teacher. Ma so, tanda tenjuje kontrol longo e ge non suji non so here now, when speaking about developing the patience of uh, patients, 
of disregarding harm done, done to oneself is again, not just blindly, we're just blindly, you know, accepting all the harms inflicted upon oneself. But <clears throat> one purpose of developing such patience must be on the, on the, on the basis of sound reasonings. Longsu kasih isu cembur na tulu tumbuh kira na longsu tega sosial kena juga mewa. Nasib orang cengkeh. Ah, sholol adu bekal longsu siapa cakap cinta orang suhu juga na tulu sosial kita tulu tumbuh cipan dua juga na longsu korang suhu dun dua siapa dengan tu zupa dila sarang suhu cipta juga mewa. So just treat our hatred or anger as something that is very you know, it is uh, the wind. When there is a windstorm is going on outside, but it's, the wind is blowing very strongly outside, so long as you have enough clothes to wear, you will be protected. So this will not bring about, this will not inflict any harm upon oneself. So now at this point, we're actually analyzing when speaking about someone inflict harm upon oneself. Is this uh, is something that is that is that can be justified to generate anger towards that person or the harm doer, in other words, the agent, whoever is engaged, whoever is inflicting harm upon oneself. So therefore, you know, such an individual who is inflicting harm upon oneself, either physically or verbally, has no, which suggests to uh, whether or such person has a choice to not inflict harm upon ourselves. Uh, uh -huh. If you very carefully analyze, and such individual has no choice because he or she is, has no independent of uh, not, you know, uh, inflicting harm, or to, harm upon oneself. Because such a person is, you know, uh, already have a really strong imprint and imprints left by the afflictions which they are previously habituated. So here, let's take an example. When one is walking around outside on the street, and when someone look at you, you know, gives you a dirty look, or someone, in fact, you know, uh, express some kind of hard words towards oneself. And we may get immediately angry towards that person. Why this is happening? It is because we have these causes and conditions or the seeds left by the afflictions to which they were previously habituated. Our habituation, our continual habituation from our previous life is already existed within our mind. It is, therefore, it is therefore, on top of that, then our erroneous conception is projected onto that person. And then we get immediately angry. 
<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs>。<laughs
dunce lone, te yi ondu sunwa ngashi la, ngashi che. Jean tele tava shi bi pen do ken la, ne ba shen de jin, de ba so shi chan, te ne dunce jan wa me ba shi bi, te ta shi do nyan ne, te la chun zi chan mi cho wa, den tan chi tre tre la, be ba shen do. Shansi-chi-chan-ne-ji-chi-ne-pa-shi-ba-na-shi-ba-na-ndene-nyumo-pi-dun-chi-ra-wa-me-pa-shi-pi-teta-shi-ba-yin-no-nyan-do-san-
And when such person is behaving very badly towards yourself or speeding or even, you know, try to harm you and so on and so forth. But we will try to ignore that person and try to run away from that person and keep a distance from that person, but we will not get angry uh, and, uh, you know, towards that person. Jesse <laughs> So <clears throat> this is how, why the bodhisattvas actually uh, strike, you know, towards strike, uh, strike at the uh, bodhisattvas strike to engage in such practice. That their very purpose of their practices is to really to subdue the minds of the other sentient beings. Uh, so we have, um, you know, there are many other obvious examples that we may can experience at this point because there are some mothers who would do anything for their child to bring their child in a positive way and even, you know, sacrificing her own comforts and uh, even the cost of their own life they put all these efforts to uh, to to bring their uh, you know children or to child you know in a, in a positive way mm-hmm. so therefore it says now with this, you know, pure love and compassion towards others, on the, uh, on, on, in addition to that, you have a clear understanding of the other's situations. If these two are, uh, you know, pres- present in one's continuum, then one will not get angry. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Uh, So then here it says, accordingly, I there was four hundred sentences. Just as a doctor does not fight but helps patients who are possessed by spirits, though they though they get angry, so the sage see the afflictions are at fault, not the person who have the afflictions. The master Chandrakriti also states, this is not living beings fault. Rather, it is the fault of the afflictions. So that learned or the learned analyze and do not fight with others. So now here, the learned analyzed uh, the faults of affliction, or the person who actually possesses afflictions, afflictions. Sorry. So in fact, it says instead of getting angry towards getting angry towards the possessor of the affliction, the person who possesses affliction, but rather uh, by to you know get angry towards the affliction itself. <clears throat> Uh, 
ペナ、ノンロンギ、カンサティジジ、ニモダ、カンサニティ、ヨアシェネ。テラカテカテチャゴルセナ。ディ、カンサティジジ、ニモギ、カテチャワラ。コンチュカテラ、シャンバロワ
ye liu tu ba de zebilu de shujero wa ni zebilu la ni ta na ina ta zebilu no mo boso ya da ina ya ta da digi ga na na de karsa shi ja ba da ni o ma ju ba na de ti ta de ji ka de ja ya de san lo pian sa cha wa ji ni ze so ina ko ten di jena ti ju shan ju yin so do wa so actually you know uh, the practice of patience the instructions of the practice of patience is very uh, very effective if one uh, go through the studies of the chapter 6 of the guide to the bodhi sattva of way of life by the shantideva however in this it says now the verse that we have read earlier the two verses and uh, are something that is very effective. So therefore they actually, Tama uh, Tsongkhapa has actually chosen those two verse, the verses, uh, by thinking that this is something, a very good instructions for the initial practitioners to practice patience. <clears throat> uh, uh, for understand us and also the Chantakritis, uh, you know, Madhimagya Avatara. あ、で、たまそうに尿毛に so now, <clears throat> here when we, when speaking about uh, applying uh, antidote towards one's affection, there's no other means of applying towards this, uh, uh, applying antidote towards affections, but one's own mind. And uh, the antidote must be prepared from one's own mind. And, uh, and uh, by understanding how this grasping itself apprehends things, self and self and phenomena. By uh, so, with this understanding, one then prepare oneself to uh, to prepare oneself to apply uh, an antidote towards the grasping itself and grasping that phenomena. <clears throat> <笑>じゃあ、なんだ、それ、じゃあ、それ、じゃあ、それ、じゃあ、それ、じゃあ、それ、じゃあ、それ、じゃあ、それ、じゃあ、それ、じゃあ、それ、じゃあ、それ、じ
uh, our brothers and sisters would recite this following their recitation of Heart Sutra, which says, may all beings to be able to cultivate this uh, wisdom, uh, lamp of wisdom, and uh, may all their afflictions be seized by means of this cultivation of the lamp of wisdom and so on. Uh So then here, <clears throat> this is how we actually practice ourselves. We engage in the practice by understanding the faults, by realizing the faults of anger and realizing the benefits of practice of patience. And this should be initially, the practice must be done on the basis of analytical, kind of analytical practice, analytical meditation analytical meditations in the beginning. And once uh, one is able to perfect one's practice of analytical meditation, one is then shift one's meditation on the single pointed meditations. And then sometime one then engage in the practice of recitations and engage in the practice of purification and so forth. So this is a process of practicing ourselves, you know, analytical, analyt, uh, following the anal practice of analytical, uh, single pointed, and followed by some recitations and purifications. Mm-hmm. <coughs> So it is again <clears throat> here, one second with the uh, materials, one second of this Bodhisattva's level. It's just it's the same meaning where it's stated that you can bear harm after you meditate on the ideas of mere phenomena. So meditate repeatedly on this remedy, remedy until you reach the certain knowledge of it. So <clears throat> here now, all the complications all the complicated, compl uh, compl complicated situation that we experience, it is due to this grasping itself or ignorance. Uh, the, uh, this ignorance of grasping at self and phenomena is a driving force which actually impels our, all those complications and puts us into the problematic situations. <coughs> So if we know how to practice Dharma, then we should know what really, you know, puts us in problematic situations both self and self and others. It is the grasping of self and self cherishing mind. It's the one that puts us in problematic situations. Mm -hmm. So this is the practice that required for us to cultivate, such as remedy towards a uh, uh, self-grasping mind, which is realizing the selfness or sort of emptiness, which becomes a direct antidote towards the self-grasping mind, and cultivation of the practice of cultivating bodhicitta, which becomes a 
uh, direct antidote towards the self cherishing minds. So here now, when speaking about the body, body cheddar, the practice of body cheddar, and benefits of the body cheddar, and the qualities of the body cheddar, something that cannot be fathomed us. You know, we, we cannot fathom this easily as ordinary beings. It is because when speaking about the practice of body cheddar, what we are certainly talking about the practice of compassion towards all other sentient beings. In other words, the equal extension of the equal compassion towards entire sentient being without exception. <clears throat> So, uh, bodhicharas are said to be the mind of all sentient beings, and the bodhisattvas are said to be the people of all other sentient beings. So, if we become a bod bodhisattvas, then of course, suddenly that uh, uh, well, you know, it will not, as being a bodhisattva, suddenly will not have a bring harm upon oneself, then let alone that uh, bringing, uh, inflicting harm upon others. So this is how we practice, you know, by meditating and familiarizing yourself with such practice, by reflecting one's mind upon the benefits of the bodhicitta and, and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, the disadvantages of not engaging the practice of bodhicitta. <clears throat> So then here it says, if these beings had a self-control, they would not have any sufferings because they would not want sufferings and because they, they, uh, because they could control it. Lounge. So therefore it says now, if the individual has uh, have his, had his, have a self-control and he or she will not engage in such actions which become harmful to others, certainly not. Because if she or he has self-control, will really understand by, by engaging in the actions which bring about harm upon other beings will cause suffering for him or herself. So suddenly he or she will not engage in such actions. So then it speaks about uh, uh, what makes the individual who has no self-control. So then here it says, furthermore, you should stop your anger, you should stop your anger by also thinking when these beings are moved by strong reflections, 
they commit suicide, live from, live from uh, cliffs, harm themselves with thorns, weapons, etc., and stop eating and so forth. If they do this to even their greatly cherished and dear selves, of course, they will hurt others. At this point, we as ordinary beings, we have the uh, we consider most dear and or that or or, 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 or or cherish is to oneself. There's no other beings that who can cherish, who can give an authentic uh, cherish or the dearest. We consider them as the most dearest rather than ourselves. We do not do that. We, we, we consider ourselves as the most dearest to oneself, right? Mm -hmm. We cherish ourselves. Anything else, than not any, any other, anything other than uh, any, any other things than else. So we are the only one that we actually cherish ourselves. So therefore, even with this, you know, we can uh, we uh, cause harm to ourselves. Then what what else can be said? Uh -huh. If he or she has a self control, then he he or she he or she will not actually bring harm upon oneself. The self who is greatly cherished, and in other words, greatly cherished, and self, uh, in other words, the dear self. Then, so here it says that now, um, and uh, and if it, uh, if the individual who is actually harming him or herself, him or herself, who is most precious to herself, him or herself, but then uh, uh, it is uh, not to mention that the individual will bring harm upon others. So this is how we, uh, this is the most reasoning that we should have to practice patience. Patience, uh, when we, one is engaging in the practice of patience, this will be the reasonings because the individual who is getting angry, who is behaving, uh, you know, very negatively towards oneself has no self-control. So then uh, normally we as ordinary beings, when someone is undergoing suffering of such angers and even taking their own life and committing suicide and so on and so forth, for us, our explanation is only to say that such and such person has this and this kind of problem. We never touch and we never bother to say, to see or understand the actual cause of this actions, actual cause of their behavior, such as taking their own life and so on and so forth. Because the actual cause, the driving force or something that actually impels the person to engage in such actions of taking their life and you know, committing suicide is ignorance. The underlying motivation is ignorance. 
so this is something really unwise, right? When one is undergoing certain sufferings or when one is uh, in the uh, problematic situations uh, or when one sees that one is in the situation of problems and so forth, then one commits suicide. It is not appropriate at all because it clearly says that the someone who is engaging in such act, such action is not really understanding uh, the underlying motivations or the actual causes, the primary causes and conditions, which actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, enables individual to engage in, engage in such actions. So therefore it is not wise at all. So, so it is, uh, it is therefore, you know, we should always try out ourselves when we are in such situation, in a problematic situation, we should always look at ourselves to see how we can really, you know, eliminate such problems in what, uh, what, un what kind of skills and method that it's really needed for oneself to be able to overcome, overcome such, uh, uh, you know, such problematic situations. So therefore in the guide to the Bodhisattva to have life, where this Pashanti Deva is stated that uh, if there is something that can be done and overcome, and why why you uh, why to worry about? Just go ahead and and you know uh, apply your skills to overcome this. And if something that cannot be done, cannot cannot be you know overcome this problem. What what uh, what benefits of worrying about it? <clears throat> ドスケチョンアサテテタグレ。ペネユニニョワネビシセデデリ。ユニニョワネビチャチェデ。ユニニョワネビチャチェデチョウユディ。アネ。デラチェレゲベグロタネチュメシェネ。デカシンゲチラ
Similarly, our angers, you know, the very intense anger, the very intense anger is generated by the inappropriate mentations, which then uh, result to uh, commit suicide and even taking, take, and harming oneself, even taking one's own life and so on. Tetasun <clears throat> so then it is it says uh engaging in the body sort of states, thus everything is dependent on something else. And because that in turn is dependent, it is not autonomous. Understanding this. Do not be angry at anything, all things being like illusions. And also, therefore, if you, if you see an enemy or friends doing what is wrong, think this arises from certain conditions and remain happy. If all, if all beings could achieve result according to their wish, then since no one wants sufferings, no one would suffer. And also, while under the control of their afflictions, some people will kill even their dear selves. So how can how can you expect expect them not to harm the bodies of others? Oh, <laughs> But so if you if one really understands how other beings have no control over their you know uh, over their delusions in fact uh, you know understanding how other beings are remaining under the control of the this, uh, this you know delusions and delusions or the afflictions then you will not have such a reaction towards this individual even the person uh, you know uh, express uh, his or her behavior towards oneself, you know, inappropriately, you will not get angry, you know, rapidly, you will not get angry easily. So, uh, because you understand the underlying causes and condition of that person. Uh -huh. So here now, at this point, you know, we as a ordinary beings, when we strive towards happiness, so to achievement of happiness and overcome sufferings. Our aim towards achieving happiness and overcome suffering is very much based on this attachment and aversion. And so long as we are remaining under the control of aversion and attachment and aversions, we will not have a result that we long to achieve. 
但是你们别人去的学生啊,你说呢,让你来天下的那个啊,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是,可是
So then here now it says on the analysis for either advantageousness or inherency, anger is unjustified, you know. It says the fault of doing harm to others either is or is not in the nature of living beings. If it is in, in if it is in their nature, it is wrong to get angry. Just as uh, just as it is wrong to get angry at a fire for being hot and burning. Similarly, if it is if it is advantageous, it is also wrong to be angry. Just as when smoke and the like appears in the in the sky, it is wrong to be angry at the sky on the account of this flows of the smoke and so forth. <clears throat> so, so for instance, now, if our finger or our hand gets burned by the fire, so there's no point of getting angry, uh, getting angry towards uh, towards fire because the heat of that nature, it is the nature or the quality, the inherent quality of the, of the fire. Therefore, it says it is wrong. It is it uh, if it is in their nature. It is wrong to get angry, just as it is wrong to get angry to us, just as it is wrong to get angry at the fire for burning hot and uh, burning hot and I mean being hot and burning. Uh, so therefore, I can read it once again here. So similarly, if it is advantageous, and it is also a wrong to be angry, just as when smoke and the like appears in the sky, it is wrong to be it's wrong to be angry at the sky on the account of just flows of smokes and so forth. So thinking mm -hmm. will stop your anger. So engaging in the bodhisattva bodhisattva deeds states. Just like when you are uh, when there's uh, no clear sky and not getting a sunlight. And uh, uh, it is inappropriate to get angry towards the sky, or nor it is, nor it is appropriate to get angry towards uh, the clouds which actually covers the sunlight. Similarly, when someone is getting angry, it is inappropriate to get angry towards the person because the person is actually, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, remaining under the control. What is getting angry be due to this anger? Uh, due uh, due to this uh, afflictions. <clears throat> so in brief, one should not get angry towards the person who is inflicting harm upon oneself. Rather, one should get angry towards the person's, uh, you know, Mental afflictions or the delusions. Uh, <clears throat> so, 
So now here, one thing that I uh, want to clarify that the nature of mind is, the nature of mind is uh, luminosity. That doesn't mean that our mind is, you know, uh, uh, mind is, mind exists inherently. It is completely different. Inherent existence of the mind and the nature of mind is luminosity. Sometimes, you know, people get misunderstanding between the two. The nature of uh, mind is luminosity and inherent existence of the mind and so on. <clears throat> So I think in this way, so the engaging in the uh, engaging in the both sort of state states is doing harm to others. It's natural for, for the challenge. It is wrong to get angry, it is wrong to get angry at them. Just as it is at fire's burning nature. And still, if the fault is advantageous, and the nature of being is good. Advantage. Right? It's wrong, just as is anger at smokes, uh, just as is anger at smokes apparent in the sky. So now here, uh, anger is not a part of the nature of our mind. Anger is not a part of the nature of one's, one's mind. It is not just like a fire and the heat of the uh, the heat of the fire, the quality of the fire being heat or being hot. Sorry, and uh, so uh, so therefore, in fact, anger and our mind is analogous to the sky and the clouds. Part of sky. So then the next, it talks about the analysis of whether the harm is direct or indirect. Anger is unjustified. Whether it is indirect or the, uh, direct, so anger is always unjustified. Ubala <clears throat> so <clears throat> on the analysis of whether whether the harm is direct or the indirect anger is unjustified if you are angry at the agent uh, agent of the agent of the harm that directly inflicts inflicts the harm you will have to be angry at the stick etc just as you are at the person, 
you are at the person, then if you are angry at the at the harm doer, who is indirectly inf inflicts harm, then just as the person imp impels the stick and so forth to do the harm, so hostility impels the persons. Therefore, get angry at the hostility. Engaging in the Bodhisattva's deed says, the stick and so forth directly cause the harm. But if I'm angry at the one one who one who throws it, then since hostility impels them, it is better to get angry at hostility. <音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音
Thank you. Thank you.